It's Madden NFL 23 on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the New Orleans Saints and the Minnesota Vikings. Just ahead on EA Sports. Now we find ourselves at the stadium that played host to Super Bowl 52, the wondrous U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Today we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the New Orleans Saints and the Minnesota Vikings. Again, everyone, I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. Greg Joseph now ready to get this one started, and we are underway from Minneapolis. Taken in at the three. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. They're led out by their quarterback out of Fresno State. Derek Carr. It's been fun to watch his development through the years, and right now what you see is a very confident quarterback who has a strong sense of self, totally understands the offense, and knows how to get the ball to his playmakers on the run. They fake the handoff. Now Carr. And the catch made by Johnson. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. A good safe pass there right off the bat. That's almost a rhythm play. That's what we like to call it. Get them into rhythm early. Something safe. Something they're confident about. Something they feel good. And once that's completed, then you just keep moving from there because the confidence elevates. A first carry now. This is Alvin Kamara. And he is going to lose yardage here. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. But just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early third and one. Now Carr. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. Just a 25-yard punt. Not what he was hoping for by any stretch. And it will be Vikings ball, first and 10. 
Minnesota's offense and QB Kirk Cousins set to go here. And one nice thing you can always say about Kirk Cousins is that he's consistent. Always puts up nice numbers each and every year. If there is a downside to his game, it's been the lack of playoff success. All in all, though, a formidable starting quarterback at a time in the league where it's tough to find your franchise guy. Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and 10 at their own 43. Now Cousins here on the bootleg, rolling to his right. And that's complete to K.J. Osborne. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that will bring up second down. to throw Cousins open man he's got him the tight end Hawkinson and he'll be taken down but not before they work this to the 45 <laughs> I got a kick out of that one partner you and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations but a guy of his size can't really hide him but the tight end drag route definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down On the jet sweep, here comes Jefferson. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there, all 11 guys on defense, diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Second and nine from the 44. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. Ezra Cleveland, the guard, called for the penalty there. And that false start penalty certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. To throw is Cousins. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. Here's Cousins. Right side, it's the tight end, Hawkinson. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. It'll be a gain of five, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. Cousins to throw for it on fours. He's got his man, T.J. Hawkinson. And he is going to pick up the Vikings first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. Both sides were holding their breath there on that fourth down play. And the offense can breathe a sigh of relief. And both knew exactly where the first down markers were. You know the defense is trying to guard those sticks and try and keep people in front. But somehow, some way, those guys found a way to pick it up. Meanwhile, Cousins' throw taken in by Hawkinson here. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. Well, they're not hiding who their central focus is on offense. Charles, he already now has four receptions here on this opening drive. And I know people who are watching the game are thinking, did they forget about him in the defensive game plan? But it's actually been the opposite. They're giving him a lot of attention, but he's been very creative and savvy in his route running and finding seams and openings in order to create these completions.
Now an end around as Cousins will just pop this forward. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. So maybe just a momentary setback on what's been a great drive so far, but second and 13 here. Cousins to throw it. Complete. Jefferson the target. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. To the air again, it's Cousins. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. They are such a talented team at defending the perimeter and taking away throws to the outside. Great confidence, great skill. Fourth down, field goal try coming. So Cousins is off, and on comes Greg Joseph for Minnesota. From the left hash, a chip shot here. The kick by Joseph is good, and the Vikings have a 3-0 lead. So a pretty good opening drive. That'll make the home fans somewhat happy. They wanted six, but they got three in the early lead. And they should be happy. The guys look good getting down the field. That's got to give them a little bit of hope that good things are in store here today for them. Joseph now to kick this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the... Looking for Thomas, but that's intercepted. And the Vikings are going to take possession of the football. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with. They're in a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different color jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. Well, the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. But following the interception, they're set up nicely here, already inside the red zone, knocking on the door, if you will, first and 10. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. They'll start out here with a jet sweep. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Justin Jefferson from 17 yards out. And the Vikings are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Well, we've talked about it before. You know, this jet sweep, something a lot of teams like to run nowadays. And this one winds up in the end zone. And it is all about creating different ways to get the ball in the hands of your playmakers. And wasn't it interesting? And we remember, of course, all scoring plays need to be verified upstairs. And I think they're going to at least take a look at this. Is this a touchdown? That's the question. CD, what are they looking for here? You just need any part of the football to break the plane. You don't need the whole football. It doesn't need to go over the entire white line. It's just that front part of the white line. And if you draw an imaginary plane going straight up, that's what they need to cross. Yeah. 
So take away the touchdown. The officials rule he did not get the football to break the plane. Cousins now. And it's caught in the end zone for the Viking touchdown by Justin Jefferson. A great effort there. There to make the grab. And they're able to add on to their advantage. Well, that's just how they do it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. Joseph connects on the extra point, and the lead grows to 10 0. So an early 10-0 lead for them now as they kick it away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. The New Orleans offense set to take over. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back, but make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. Kamara gets it again on second down. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Again, it's Kamara. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. On second down, Kamara. And he'll pick up about three there, up to the 43. And the Vikings are going to beef up their secondary here. Six DBs on third. Now Carr. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. This offense is starting to get into rhythm. A nice quick throw there on target, able to pick up another first down. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Carr going to throw. 
flush to his, and he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. And Daniil Hunter, he's the one who gets in there and brings him down to the ground. Well, they've been fighting and scratching and clawing for that first sack in the game, and it turns out to be a big one. Not just a short one right there behind the line. First one they get, 10-plus yards, and the guy who has the legs to escape most of these. So after the sack, a scenario you certainly don't work on too often. Second and 24. Now here's a whistle as flags come in. And we'll check out the call. Oh, jumping early from his tight end spot. Maybe trying to get a jump start on that route. Yeah, I think you're exactly right about that. And oftentimes when you see that, that means the play call was supposed to come in his direction, and he was eager to go catch a pass. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Here's Kamara off the draw. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. Give him five yards on the run there, but it'll leave him with a definite third and long on the horizon. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Let's come do this thing, baby. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Working from the gun, it's Carr. They'll get this out to Kamara. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. They pick up 10, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. Brandon has certainly looked like they had that play defended well, but it still almost worked. Got it to the running back. He wound up getting really good yardage out of it. But it was third and long, and they were able to rally and stop it before he could get to the marker. Here comes the Saints punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And now a low liner. I think he mishit it. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. 10-0 the score after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football as they get set to start their drive with a first and ten. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. With the football changing hands here, and as this offense takes a field, Charles, they'd be fine with more of the same on this upcoming drive. Last time out, they found the end zone for six. And they're certainly hoping for more of the same, but the game plan, I doubt it'll just be a carbon copy of the last drive because I think this offense is ready to break out some new wrinkles and try some new things that might be hidden in their playbook. They want to use that confidence to its advantage while also keeping the defense from anticipating what's up next. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Now Cousins. To the right side and complete to Jefferson. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. So that one a disaster, a big loss there with second down coming up. Well, let's call that a, a less than ideal play on first down. No doubt about that one because that was a situation of just digging a deeper and deeper hole for himself. And it ended up a big time loss. A hole to dig out of here, second and 17. Now Cousins. Open man is Osborne, he's got him. And they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 47.
They'll go Madison up the middle. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them. And boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Going to run with Madison again. And good running. Going to get this down close to a first at the Saints 37. That was a good run. Probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? New Orleans adding some depth to the secondary. They've got six DBs out there now for third. From the gun, here's Cousins. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 20-yard line. 18 yards, a big pickup there on third down. Well, things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick a down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. Here's Madison running on first down. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Well, to me, there is no question about the intent there, and I think he was a little fortunate that the penalty flag didn't come out for grounding. But he'll get away with it and get another shot on third down. Out of the huddle now for play number nine on this drive. This is third down at eight. Throwing his Cousins. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. Fourth down, field goal try coming, so Cousins is off, and on comes Greg Joseph for Minnesota. Joseph's got it, and that will extend their lead even further. So three points there, and they continue to build this first-half lead. Yeah, every little bit helps, and the more that you can put together drives and start controlling the tempo, controlling possession, finishing with points, the better off you're going to be. Joseph now to kick this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They find themselves down 13-0 here as they try to get things started offensively. First and 10. From the gun, it's Carr. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Byron Murphy. And the Vikings are going to take possession of the football. 
And they'll take possession already in the red zone and in a great spot to add points to the scoreboard. And Brandon, how many times have we seen a defense with a lot of field behind them get even more aggressive, right? They feel like they've got them not pinned down, but in a favorable spot for them. And they took advantage of it there, got a nice interception, and set up their offense in great shape. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Now a give to Madison. Nathan Shepard in there to make the tackle. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Here's Madison getting it again on second. And despite the fancy footwork we saw, they'll get to him just inside the 15. It's a four-yard pickup there, and it leaves him with third and five. Throwing Cousins. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Osborne. And the Vikings are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Everything's going right here in this first half, and they've got a good lead. And part of that can be attributed to their success on third downs. This is another conversion here, and they can look to really open things up now with this first and goal. Madison will take this into the end zone for a Viking touchdown. And certainly some credit there for that touchdown goes to the offensive line. They never get the credit they deserve in the stat sheet, but they are the reason that they got the points. Excellent job up front, clearing the way for the score. Joseph now to have the PAT. And that one pushes the lead up to an even 20. A drive there of just four plays. And it was capped off by a touchdown scamper from Alexander Madison. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. The New Orleans offense back out and ready to go. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. Want to. Well, no, but oh, let me finish. Okay, my bad. You're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you just you called it. I think you just called a desperation time. I, I think did. you did. But yeah. let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating to use a boxing analogy. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? Win first down so that can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. 
Throwing now is Carr. Over the middle into the hands of Michael Thomas. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The Saints first down there on a gain of 11. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. So after the run by Kamara, now another first and 10. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And he'll be taken down at about the 45. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want, but on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? From the 45 on second down, Carr. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. The Saints on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. A tenth carry for Kamara. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. We remind you in just a couple of minutes, we'll get you to Orlando and our good friend Jonathan Coachman. Coach will run through some of the numbers and the next-gen stats from this first half of football so far. Off to Thomas on the left side. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. To throw again on second down. Carr looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Well, this defense is certainly organized and playing off of each other because the rush is providing pressure and the coverage is forcing incompletions and capitalizing on mistakes. When you get every level on defense hitting it once, you get first half scores just like this one. Here comes play number nine now as they come up on a third and three. To throw is Carr. They'll set up the screen now to Kamara. And it will be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt, and that will move the deficit from 20 down to 17. Well, still trailing here, but they do get the late field goal. Now their defense will try to keep this score right where it is heading into the locker room. Yeah, and trailing it to break, you obviously don't want to go in off of a negative play. Give them credit for that one. Finding a way to put points on the board, give them any type of a spark, anything to build off of as they try and plan a comeback.
Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. Kene Duangu now out of his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The Vikings going to take over now late in this first half. And with a three-score lead already, this is not time for a momentum change, so I'd imagine they'd be happy to just take this into the locker room. First down, here's Cousins. And he's got this to Jefferson. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. To throw, Cousins. Now they go screen, it's complete. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. But despite the completion, they're gonna wind up losing three there. Second down. Oh, uh, partner, when you see a screen pass and the defensive tackle ends up making the play, you know that one wasn't sold well at all because he should be upfield by the time you throw the pass. If not, you end up with big trouble, as we just saw right there. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. First things first, let's get a check on the next-gen stats from that first half for the Saints. And not much went right in those first two quarters. You can see the numbers on the ground there. Not a whole lot to write home about so far. Meanwhile, for the Vikings, you get a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And whatever they've done, it's worked as they have the lead through two quarters of play. And we welcome you back now alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon getting set for quarter number three here. Lutz now to kick this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And the Vikings set to go on offense to begin the third quarter. As this offense takes the field to begin the opening drive of the second half, Charles, remember in that first half, good through the air and really all around an outstanding offensive performance. Absolutely. They've reached the end zone several times. The passing game working awfully well and most importantly, partner. Yeah, they went to the tunnel with a lead. They come back out with that lead. Absolutely. NFL coaches, we know they're perfectionists in a lot of ways, but they had to like what they saw in that first half. On first and 10, Cousins. Throw left side taken in by Jefferson. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Five catches for him in that first half, and that's number six that we just saw, and also a first down. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. Running from the shotgun with Madison. And he maneuvers up the middle for three. And it's second down. 
Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Another carry now for Madison. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. If this defense wants to stay in this ball game, they've got to start ending some drives. That helps. And they have to look ahead at what they expect the offense to do. And right now with that lead, that's run the football. So you don't just stack the line of scrimmage. You have to get upfield and try and make some plays in their backfield. He's going to air one out. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. A deep ball down that right sideline, and he made sure that he put it where either his guy was going to catch it or no one was. Now here's Ryan right now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. This is taken at about the 14. They'll call this a 41-yard punt, seven on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They start the drive on the ground. Kamara. Yeah, he'll get what he can up the middle. Three yards. That'll bring up second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play. It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field. I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. From the 24, Carr. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Good work after the catch. Going to net him 23 and a first. They go with the empty set there. Five receivers in the formation. Normally, you want to have a running back in to block. But in this case, he's lined up to the right. And he ends up getting the football. A lot of confusion calls defensively. And it turns into a big play. Now a first down carry, it's Kamara. And he works his way forward to pick up four yards there, second down. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Coming up on a second and six. They run it again with Kamara. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Carr to throw. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he is going to have a Saints first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Carr. Escaping the pressure right. That's complete to his running back, Kamara. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. That one goes for 24 yards. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football, and right now I think the scoreboard is dictating 
what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Into the red zone, it's Carr. Back to Kamara for another catch. No gain on the screen there, it's second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Second and ten. Coming left is Kamara. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. 61 yards rushing for him now to this point. So a decent deficit at this stage in the second half. Four down territory? No doubt about it. There's not a chance that he hasn't looked ahead and said, okay, if we gain yardage on this play, this is what we'll do going forward. If we lose yardage, this is the play call that I'll have ready. Car to throw on third and one. Throw left side complete. That's Thomas. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Well, you have to be aware defensively that you've got two goals because obviously you're trying to prevent the touchdown, but you're also trying to keep it from getting a first down as well. That time they weren't up to the task, and it's first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Here's Carr. Got a man open. It's Thomas. It's a touchdown for New Orleans. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Saints are able to cut into that deficit. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Will Lutz on for the point after. It's up, it's good. That'll make the score line 20 to 10. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it's Michael Thomas who ends it with a touchdown reception. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. This now a 10-point game, so things tightening a little bit after that last score. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. They'll get this underneath to Madison. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Off the play fake. Cousins. Wide open receiver complete. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. That one a gain of 20 and a first down.
On the handoff, it's Madison. And he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. Taken down by Pete Werner. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Cousins to throw it. Sideline throw. It's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes in bounds. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Play action now. Cousins. He'll buy some time right. And this one is incomplete. As quarterbacks like to do it, he pushed it downfield on that throw. But I think that since he was outside the pocket and there was open space, it would have been a good time for his first carry of the game. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. He had the distance, but it's no good. Wide to the right, and the lead will hold at 10. Well, Brandon, anything beyond 50, you start rolling the dice a bit. And once you get up around 57, 58 yards, the chances of making it go down dramatically. And sure enough, this one winds up no good. Derek Carr getting set and ready to go again on offense here. Last series, the ball never hit the ground. Six to six, touchdown pass. So whatever he did then, do it again, right? Yeah, it reminds me a lot of when I watched the best quarterbacks throw seven on seven or even routes versus air. They're accurate. The receivers catch it. The ball never touches the ground. Or if you want to take it to basketball, a well-executed fast break, right? Pass, 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 finish at the rim, basket. Yeah, ball never hits the ground there either. They'll try to get the offense going with Kamara. Call that a gain of five as the clock ticks inside of two minutes to go now in the third. Hey, it's not the most spectacular play, but I think most teams will take that every single time for the first play of a drive. Begin the series with positive yardage and set yourself up for a very manageable second down. From the 47, it's second and five. Carr going to throw. And the catch made by Johnson. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. As a passer, you're always trying to find that open window to throw the ball downfield. How about this one? Right in the middle of the field, right in the heart of a defense. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. A man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Kamara again. And he's down into the red zone at the 16 after a gain of 16, first and 10. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. He came through well with a nice pass break up there. Fortunate that he was on the spot. He's the only guy left to prevent the first down. from Minneapolis third quarter here second and ten they'll pound it up the middle with Camara and he'll take this one down near the 15 they do get a yard there but only a yard leaves him with third and nine looming three quarters in the books you're watching the NFL on EA Sports. 
And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. The Saints on third down. They've had good success. Five for eight to this point. This is third and nine. Now Carr. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. And he's got this inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. It'll go down as a gain of 6. And that's going to make it 4th down. So a big one coming now for Will Lutz from the right hash, and this one just a chippy. The kick by Lutz is good, and that will tighten this one up a bit. Now a one-score game at 20-13. to 13. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get it the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago. So they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and ten. They'll start on the ground with Madison. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. Here's Madison getting it again on second. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. And this is picked up by the Saints. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. Well, partner, here's where team football gets tested a little bit because I know the defensive guys were over there chilling on the sidelines, and all of a sudden, they heard the sudden change call because that fumble puts them right back on the field. And they've got to go out and finish the game now themselves. Absolutely. Nursing that slim lead here in the fourth, a costly turnover. Here we go. So after the fumble recovery, it's Carr. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And they're going to get this down to about the 17-yard line here. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. A little screen pass, backdoored them, and that time worked well for a solid game. Throwing again on second down. Carr. Alvin Kamara reeling it in on back-to-back -back plays. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. So they'll wind up losing five yards on the play. And third and eight now. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. Throwing his car on third down. In the hands of Kamara. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 
I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Car now to throw. And it's incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. They'll look to throw again. And that's incomplete. Well, they certainly did a nice job there, picking him up out of the backfield and then running stride for stride with him. That's good coverage, and it led to an incompletion. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now Carr. Looking middle, and that's complete. Touchdown, Saints. An 11-yard touchdown. And the Saints are an extra point away from tying this game here on the fourth. So obviously they will decline the penalty there, and the result is six points. The Lutz will look to add the extra point. And no sweat, he puts it through, and we are tied here in the fourth. A drive that time of six plays, and it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. Fitting for what's been a tight ball game. We're all even at 20 now as the kick's away. Taken at the goal line. Well, now how about this return? And he goes out of bounds after a solid return to the 45. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. Well, they just gave up the score to tie it. That's the bad news. The good news, plenty of time in this fourth quarter to try to grab that lead back. Well, so much for the worry about how they would be after losing their lead. What a big-time return to seize the momentum back. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 45. Cousins. And that's going to be incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Cousins. And this one incomplete, threw it down at the feet of his receiver. This defense has passed its first two tests by forcing back-to-back -back incompletions. They know that there's probably another throw coming on third down. Let's see if they decide to force the issue by sending people on a blitz. The offense on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and ten. Throwing his Cousins. This goes out wide for Madison. And he gets this to the 48, but no further. Well short of the line to gain. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff, and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, 
I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. And here's Ryan right now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. The New Orleans offense set to take over. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. I call it no gain there on the first down play. Now they couldn't get anything going there out on the right side in the flat of the swing pass. And didn't we have a discussion with their staff about wanting to get the backs more involved in the Big passing emphasis. game? Huge emphasis for this game, but obviously the defense had other plans and really made a nice play. Looking to throw again on second down. Carr. They'll get this out to Kamara. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. So the completion good for seven there. And now we've got a third and four. I think the best offenses love to give the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss. And they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. Did you see that route the way that I did? I yep. thought he was trying to get deep Yeah, that first. wasn't the first option. No, not to, he came off of that guy, the deep guy, and came underneath on the drag, completed it very well. They'll run out of the gun with Kamara. Takes it to the 26, just a one-yard gain. You know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stuffed the run. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Now Carr. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Can't fault the offensive line for that incompletion at all. He had all day to throw the football. Their alarm clocks went off early today, didn't they? <laughs> Absolutely they did. He was surveying, surveying, finally let it go, but incomplete. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. And that is caught one-handed. Oh, my, he pulled it in. That one goes for 29 yards on third down. Well, it's one thing to grab it with one hand, but when you make a catch of that distance, quite another. Yes, sir. I mean, that one right there, we keep talking about the high-flying antics that we're seeing from receivers nowadays. Doesn't matter what spot they start in, but when it actually does happen in the heat of battle, it brings me right out of my seat. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 46. Back to the ground, it's Kamara. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. What's up, man? Well, you hate that defensively. They had him pretty well corralled, but the face mask, that obviously changes things. Yeah, it's a bit frustrating because you feel like you did everything right. You had him stop, but the hand gets up just a little too high, and the natural inclination is to hold on, and that's going to get called every time. On first down, Carr. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. And he's going to be taken down right at the 10-yard line. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, 
That's when you lean on your stars, and he came through with a nice catch right there. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Again, it's Carr. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And now following the completion, we're going to get a stoppage here for an injury. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. On second down, Camara, And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally, because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. And he appears to be about two feet short on third and three. Leaves him with a fourth and one. I bet they thought they had picked that one up because it was a third and two call. And they got awfully close. Now we're at fourth and inches. I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here <laughs> and maybe want to go pick it up. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to break our fourth quarter tie. The kick by Lutz is good. And they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Osborne. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. Now Cousins. Oh, going for Jefferson downfield. And that going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Trying to erase that deficit all at once. One big shot. He took it. Unfortunately for him, incomplete. The battle in the trenches never more important than right now. This is third and inches. They go play action. Cousins. Open man is Osborne. He's got it. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Let's go, baby. 
Let's go, baby. Turn it up. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. They'll throw again. Cousins. Throw caught there by Osborne. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down to the wire. Now left side on the swing pass. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50 right at midfield. It'll be a loss of two, maybe three on the play. And now third down and six to go. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Cousins to throw. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete. Certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. Partner, they've got one chance left to keep this one going. And I think for you and me, let's think along with their offensive coordinator now. Has to think back, cycle through every play of this contest and remember what's worked and what has it. Because right here, he needs the best play of the game in order to keep this one alive. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this defense will take over right at midfield. So now let's reset here, Charles. They do have two timeouts left so they can stop the clock twice. This one's not quite over yet. No, and what you're doing on defense, you're going to use both timeouts, obviously. But you've got to call defenses are going to force the issue early, meaning you want that play over fast. You don't want to give them time to dance around in the backfield or run a wide sweep that'll take off time. Blitz them, put pressure on them, make sure that play ends quickly so that you can go ahead and keep moving. Kamara up the middle. And he's going to get this one down to the 45. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining. Second down at five. Again, it's Camara. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. And they will take a knee here. The Saints in victory formation now as they'll take the knee. Partner, they took a knee to finish this one off. To me, that's the only thing they lost in the fourth quarter. How about that comeback? Yeah, trailed coming into the last frame. Got it done, taking the knee. And the defense, they'll spread the field a dime package here on third and 12. Car down to a knee, and that ought to just about do it. 
Well, that second half, Charles, a little bit different from the first. Not only did we have the lead change after intermission, but they were able to pitch the shutout in the second half and get an impressive victory. And what's the old expression? That's not quite how I saw it playing out in my head. You know they didn't expect this at all. As you mentioned, went into the half of the lead. Losing the game is one thing. Getting shut out in the second half, that's a surprise.